In this video we're going to set up a basic future value spreadsheet to take a look at how much wealth we've accumulated over a specific time period. The main point of this spreadsheet is to walk through some of the basics of setting up a spreadsheet. One of the key things that is very critical when setting up a spreadsheet is that spreadsheets are designed to allow you to do lots of what-if analysis. Let me change one input and see what happens and very quickly everything gets in your model gets updated. A lot of times when I see students setting up spreadsheets initially they tend to make the mistake of trying to plug their formulas in with numbers instead of cell references. And if you use numbers in your formulas, then it makes it very difficult to set up or to do that what if analysis. So when we make this setup, what we're going to do is set up all our input data and then set up our future value calculation. So if we're looking at a future value, one of the things we might want to know is how much our initial contribution is going to be. So we're going to set up a cell for initial contribution. We're going to want to know our periodic contribution. This may be how much we're saving per month, it may be how much we're saving per year, how much per week. Right now we want to keep that as flexible as possible. So we're going to set up our periodic contribution and then we're also going to have contributions per year. Now we also need to know our rate of return. So we're going to plug that in there. And we want to know how long we're going to have for our money to accumulate. So we're going to look at our time, our number of years. Now, one thing I want to do real quick is drag this out so all these fit in one column. So all I'm going to do is go up here to the section between A and B and notice how the cursor changes when I do that. Moves from a white plus to a little column splitter. And now I want to left click on my mouse and just drag that over. As I drag that over, that changes the width of column A. So now all my headings will fit in that column. Now let's just set up some values. Doesn't really matter what we put in here. But let's say 5,000 is my initial contribution and I want to contribute $50 per week. So my periodic contribution is going to be 50 and there are 52 periods per year. The rate of return that I'm going to earn, let's just say is 6%. So I'm going to set that up at 6% and the time, let me just say 30 years. So I've got a 30 year time horizon. Now I want to calculate my future value. So I'm going to set up a cell for my future value. That's just the label of it. Cell's going to go in here. Now for future value, I need to set up the formula for that. One way to get that is go to this insert function, the little f of x key right there. Just click on that insert function and it'll pull up a little dialog box that you can choose from. Now if you've used this function recently, the future value function, you're going to see it right up here in your most recently used. If you haven't done it before, you might have to look for it and it's going to be a financial calculation. So you can see all these different values, financial, date and time, math and trig, statistical, so on. What we want is financial. So just click on financial and now you'll see several different functions. All these functions are briefly explained. So lots of different functions there with a brief explanation. What we want is future value. So that's just FV. And you can see down here the explanation. We need to put in the rate, the number of periods, the payment, present value and type returns the future value of an investment based on periodic constant payments and a constant interest rate. That's what we want so just click OK and now it pulls up another dialog box that allows us to enter these. Now the first thing we want is our rate. 
Now because this is a cell reference, it's already set up as a percent, but one quick thing I want to stress is whenever you're using the time value of money functions in Excel, rates are always entered as percent or as decimals. So if you've got 6%, you can't enter 6 there, it's got to be 0 0.06. Because I've formatted my cell B4 over here as percentages, it already knows that's going to be a decimal, so I'm fine. But if I would have entered that as just 6 instead of 6%, then Excel would have used 600% as my rate of return. So be careful for, about that if you're coming from the financial calculator approach. A little bit different setup. But again, I want a cell reference. So I'm going to use B4. And I want that to be based on the number of periods. That's 6% per year. But remember, I'm doing weekly contributions. So I've got 52 periods per year. So I need to divide that by B3 that's going to give me my weekly rate of return and you can see over here that number is given so we can take a look at what that's going to be the number of periods now I've got the number of years times the contributions per year so I've got 1560 weeks going on in this cycle my payment is 50. Now just like a financial calculator if you enter a negative payment and a negative present value you're going to get a positive future value. If you enter a positive pre payment and a positive present value you're going to get a negative future value. You don't want to look at your future value and have it be negative so what we're going to do is make our payment and present value negative. The idea negative implies a cash outflow money going away from us today and into our savings account. So you want to put a negative sign there and then your periodic contribution. So you can just see over here that's negative 50. Now our present value negative and our initial contribution is up in cell B1 negative 5,000 now we've entered enough data that you can see there's actually a preview here of what our answer is going to be two hundred forty eight thousand seven hundred sixty three dollars and four cents the last value in the dialog box is type is it an ordinary annuity or an annuity due well if we have payment at the beginning of the period which would be an annuity due we would want to set it up as type one Normally, when we do future value calculations, we assume that the payment comes at the end of each period, an ordinary annuity. So we could enter zero there or just leave it omitted. That's the default setting is end of period. So we're just going to leave that blank, hit OK. And now you can see we get our answer here, $248,763.04. Now the nice thing about the way I set this up, instead of using actual numbers in my formula. Note up here you can see the formula. You can see there's no numbers there. It's all just cell references. So now I can say, you know what? Maybe instead of $50 a month, I want to save 75. Change my input. Automatically it updates. What if my rate of return is 7%? Change my input. Automatically updates. What if instead of saving per week I want to save so much per month so I want to save three hundred dollars every month now there's 12 periods per year 406 573 now I want to go back real quick when this was 52 before I changed that you may have noticed a bunch of hash marks here this was saying I wanted to save three hundred dollars a week for 52 periods and the number was too big to actually fit in that cell using the font size that I had. Quick way to do that is just make your column a little bit wider so you can go up here and just stretch that out and now you'll see it fits. Another little tool that you may decide to use if we go up here to our home tab you'll notice that there are there's a little box here 
for cells, insert, delete, and format. You can use an automatic column width. So let's go ahead and highlight this entire spreadsheet we've got set up. Go over here to format, auto fit the column width, and that'll automatically set the adjustment to give us just as wide as we need. So when I click on that, you can see what it did is shorten these up a little bit, gave enough room to fit all my headings here, gave enough room to fit in the $1,635,237.16 future value that I've got. And so this is just a quick basic spreadsheet set up. Again, the key advantage of this, because there are no numbers in our formula, we can just very easily change any of our inputs and automatically changes the future value. Something you always want to make sure you're doing when you're setting up formulas in Excel is make sure you use cell references and not actual numbers in the formula if at all possible. The more you can use cell references, the more flexible your spreadsheet is going to be, the more powerful it's going to be to use for what-if analysis. Thank you.